Well, look at that pile. Bright and early in the morning. We dropping right in on that. There's the first fish of the day, right there, folks. Man. Good solid fish to start the day off. Good episode. This is the different types of swim baits and baits you can use during summer fishing. That's a nice eater fish for the summertime here in my home lake. But we're starting off today with a with a paddle tail, and uh, we're going to work through the the different types of baits you can use: a paddle tail, a curly tail, a regular minnow style, and a hair. And we're going to talk about why we would use one or the other. That's the that's the focus today, is the different styles of baits and what they give you and maybe why you should use them. At least the reason why I use them. So I start off with a, uh, look at this guy, he's already got it. I start off with a paddle tail typically. And then of course I go to your, your home ho-hum minnow bait as well. But typically, that's just a small guy. I start off with a paddle tail. This is a three pound fishing paddle tail. Um, you can use any color you'd like. It doesn't matter however it affects, you know, for your lake, but let's, I'll tell you what, let's talk about it. All right, through this episode, I'm gonna give you reasons why I use it, etc. But I typically do start off with the paddle tail, okay? I like a small paddle tail. Um, I don't go with too much bigger than this. This is a two inch. Then we're gonna talk about The next thing we're going to talk about is the curly tail. And this is the guy we're going to kind of use here next, right? So a different action than a paddle tail. To me, it's got more of a snaky kind of a, uh, it's a smoother look. Can be a longer bait because when you stretch out the tail, it does become a longer bait. Um, and so there are reasons why I use each one of these. And then of course we have the standard minnow style. This is the e-frog from three pound fishing i love this bait right here it's got a good contrast in colors the chartreuse is awesome but again you have that tail it's your standard bait and then lastly and we have been talking about it a lot lately is the hair jig right so this guy's been hot and so again with this guy i always look at in terms of size water displacement we talked about that in the last episode so we're going to go through all four of these baits and kind of give you a breakdown as to when and why i would use one or the other but typically i start off with a paddle tail on any lake that i'm going to be casting any lake that i don't rin lake some of the bigger lakes grenada etc i definitely like a standard minnow style or a hair jig and then if i'm really you know struggling to find you know what, what what's going to make these guys close the gap i always talk about closing the gap i'll break out a curly tail and you know a lot of times i'll use a curly tail during the spawn but i'll tell you what we're going to talk about why and when i use it and when i switch up here so let's put some more fish in the all right <laughs> all right so very aggressive fish this morning to the e-frog didn't seem to matter didn't seem to change anything so i would typically I would typically fish with this until all of a sudden I saw that the fish were not closing the gap. When I mean closing the gap is when those fish are coming at it and they actually close it. Now a lot of times I will pull, set the hook immediately regardless of whether I feel it or not. It's a big deal on my leg. Um, people don't realize it, but these are black crappie. They're really finicky and they will just literally place it in their mouth and they will not take it in. You will not feel it. and. So a lot of times I will pull even though I don't feel them. So once I stop seeing them close that gap is when I will add a little bit of action to my jigs. And that means paddle tail, curly tail. And based on how big those fish are, that's going to dictate how many you know changes I'm going to go for. I'm not as a big believer in color as I once was, although I do think a contrast in color. So this orange head this body and again i'm gonna put this upside down just because all of a sudden it's really an older bait i guess um 
I do believe in contrast. I think they see the changing color in, in baits. Oh. Good fish here, guys. Caught on the curly tail. Solid fish here. And a curly tail for me is, you know, probably last resort, more of a spawning shallow water bait. But if I want a really slow fall, I'm going with the curly tail. The curly tail is going to give me a super small, slow fall, right? There are a lot of things grabbing the water, right? And um, definitely going to give probably the most action. But it's probably my least favorite, but I do use it a lot in the, in the, in the uh, spawn time, so. And there's another one. Good fish here. That might be our picture fish. Look at the back on this guy. The back is just amazing. Just nice and thick. Hopefully that shows off as well as it is. So what I would do in this situation where I've caught two fish with the paddle tail, but I didn't know it's any other fish we're, we're moving. I'm going to now switch it up and we're going to go with the three pound fishing hair jig. So right there. So only like really the first pass, one or two fish, I think. And then the second pass was two fish that came out of it. One closed the gap on it. So again, I'm probably not the best fan of a curly tail or anything other than, I just love a paddle tail. For some reason, that just seems to be the thing I, I, I gravitate towards. But a hair jig, I love. And so we're gonna now throw the hair jig and see what kind of response we get. Now we're talking small, we're talking different types of water displacement. It's absorbing the water, it's not pushing away. So it's gonna be a little bit more subtle. And um, now I'm supplementing all these baits with a number seven split shot. I love using braid, sniping braid is what I use. And uh, it allows you to get complete feedback when a fish touches, sniffs, I mean, just gets around that bait, you're gonna feel it with sniping braid. And that's not a sales pitch, folks, that's just a fact. So here they are right here. We're dropping down completely different bait, same pile. We already have one that comes way out for it. We're dropping right back into it. Here he comes again. And he just seems to want to push it away. So we're going to go again. Now, a lot of things you can do with a hair jig, I think it's pretty awesome. You can come right up here on vertical jig them, so they don't seem to be too active. I might have made another pass. I could actually slow it down by taking the number seven split shot off. But sometimes if you just dance a hair jig around them, they just can't, they, yep, there goes the first hit. They just can't stand it. So they're just dropping in. There it is. Look at that. So coming in vertical will also change a lot of things for you. Pass that sometimes they don't they aren't reacting fast enough for a passing bait over the of the brush pile. So actually coming up and going straight up and down is uh, letting them go is another way to change everything up. Now I would not do that with a curly tail. I just feel like a curly tail is meant to is meant to come across the pile. It needs the action of the of the tail, but hair jig for sure and that basic mental style is um see sometimes you can get these guys that are deep in the pile you guys probably can't see that bait necessarily but if you look closely you might be able to here and i'm just dancing it around not too much movement 
there's another one. And we're just coming straight up and down down this pile. And there are some big fish on this pile. I mean, I can tell you right now, there's some big fish on this pile. Good fish there, eater sized fish. So we're just looking to entice somebody to, to eat. There's another one. That, that is a complete, I mean, that's a hair jig, small profile, sniping braid reaction there because, you know, this guy absolutely inhaled it. And, but at the same time, I barely felt it. And so, good fish there, guys. There's one right there. Yeah, I'd say the hair jig's winning out today. I think you can go vertical on them. And they are not having a problem with this hair jig right now, I'll tell you that. If you're interested, these are available on the website. I talk about it all the time. You can buy them in singles, you can buy one. Unfortunately, the shipping would be the same, but for, eight, for $2.50 or something like that, um, all day long. Or you can get a combo pack and try a bunch of them. But, There it is. Came a long way for it too, didn't you? You saw that. Good fish here. Good fish. Mm-mm. -mm. So again, I typically will start off with a paddle tail. I'll move to a standard minnow style jig. Let's see if I can get better lighting for you guys. A standard minnow style jig, so paddle tail minnow style jig. Um, sometimes I'll start off with a hair jig based on the water type, but I like to go through those three types. And again, the, the curly tail, probably the least my favorite. Um, that's just me personally. I'm sure a lot of people have their preferences on styles of jigs and, and plastics that they like to use, and that's perfectly fine. Um, it's whatever works on your lake. And so when you go to these lakes, you're gonna figure out that what works kind of better. When I go to Rim Lake, I'm almost 100% hair jigs. Um, I always start off with hair jigs there. And, and then I kind of adjust from there. But, um, and that's the same with uh, Grenada even. So some of those Mississippi lakes. I really enjoy fishing with hair jigs. The reason why is because they, uh, they don't slip off. You don't have to worry about repositioning the plastic, that type of thing. They last for a very long time. So hair jigs are always a positive. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching Three Pound Fishing. Uh, please share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, interesting fact about Three Pound Fishing is that only out of the watchers, only 20% are actually subscribers. So we get a lot of watches on the, on the channel, but not everybody subscribes. It's free to subscribe.